So Jacob, last March, you were a junior at Edmonds Woodway and all of a sudden COVID hit. Yeah. What were, was, you, what were you thinking? Well, I mean, I had been joking with my friends for quite a while before that, that we needed to shut down school because right, uh, probably a week before school closed. So my last day of like in-person school was March 12th and about a week before everything closed down, I went on a festival, a jazz festival with my whole uh, jazz ensemble to the University of Idaho to play. And while we were there, there were students uh, from a school that had a confirmed case. And a couple of students actually ended up going home sick from that school while we were there wow. at this huge festival, you know, with, I don't know, about three, 4,000 students from different, different bands. And it was a big deal. Like that was when it really felt real to us because you know, there wasn't a lot of good media coverage in that early, you know, late February right. time period of what was going on and how serious everything was. I was. Like, of course, we knew everything going on in China and uh, other countries. You know, Italy was starting to, you know, understand what was going on in different European countries. But we didn't really know or understand it yet, I guess, as teenagers. Right. And so that was the first when it started feeling real. And then after that point, I was definitely in favor of closing schools as quickly as possible. So what about at home? I mean, all of a sudden you couldn't do your activities. What what was going through your mind? I mean, ironically, uh, for like the first little bit, again, it took time to dawn. And I think I can say this for most of my classmates. It took time to dawn how long all of this would actually go on for. Because, again, this is a completely unprecedented event in my lifetime. So my first feeling when coming home from uh, school was relief actually because <laughs> it's during it was during a very busy part of the year and they didn't have any immediate plans it took at least two weeks for us to get even a, a draft of what online school would be like at first so uh those first two weeks involved a lot of sleeping in and a lot of nothing which honestly again at first was a really good reprieve for me to be honest Sure. And, I, and I'm sure, you know, you and your brother and your brother's uh, a year younger than you or two years younger than you? He's uh, three years younger than me. Three years he, younger than me. Uh, but, but you are, you two are pretty self-sufficient. You can take care of yourself at home. And if they did have to leave, you were fine. Unlike a lot of folks who have young kids and the parents have to be home with them to take care of them. Yeah. My brother and I could pretty much take care of ourselves. I mean, for the first, I mean, he was in eighth grade when everything shut down. And so a lot of middle schoolers didn't really have any online schooling, at least like with online meetings. They received assignments and different things, but there wasn't a lot of actual like online uh, connection. So poor internet and stuff like that also wasn't really an issue for us. So we had it easier definitely than a lot of families. Have you, what'd you think about having to wear a mask all the time? Uh, that was actually a really easy transition for me, to be honest. Uh, because, I mean, I, I'm a very, uh, I love learning as a, just as a person. And so when everything started happening, everything started closing down, I kind of went on a bit of a research binge, to be honest. And it actually got to the point where I had to stop just because it really wasn't healthy to constantly be digging through news and scientific articles and different things. But it, it didn't take me very long to understand the benefits of wearing a mask because there's plenty of studies from uh, the SARS outbreak and H1N1 of the benefits of wearing masks. What do you do about uh, applying for colleges? Well, the college application process is pretty much already mostly online. Uh, there's a couple services, uh, coalition and common application, which are pretty much entirely web-based services uh, for getting all your information, submitting uh, transcripts and different things. Um, the big challenge really for a lot of my, my classmates and I was uh, standardized testing because uh, as of right now, uh, it's October 8th and I recently received the refund for my fifth attempt to take the SAT. Uh, <laughs> so it really, at this point, most of my friends and I who have you know, gotten testing locations in Idaho or have gotten multiple refunds. I mean, there's no point in trying really. And a lot of schools have recognized that. And 
uh, have waived uh, SAT testing requirements. Uh, for example, I'm looking at uh, UCLA as one of the colleges I'm applying to, and they've waived their uh, testing requirements until 2024, I think, as of right now. Wow. So a lot of colleges have adjusted. A lot of prestigious colleges have had trouble adjusting because <laughs> they've been forced to kind of lower their requirements or shift to a more holistic approach of viewing students. So that's an interesting change. Yeah. So it's been quite an, you know, you said it's something unprecedented in your lifetime. It's unprecedented in my lifetime too. It's uh, it's pretty crazy for sure. Yeah. How is uh, moving on from that? How was, what was your first reaction when things started shutting down? Well, you know, like you, I, I don't think it really struck me uh, the gravity of the situation until everything started to get shut down. And then, you know, for my wife and I, we, <laughs> this was the year that we were going to do a lot of traveling. So every single month of this year, we had already paid for airfare and okay. paid for places to stay for, for the remainder of the nine months of the year. So, you know, you start thinking about well, how are we going to cancel those and what are we going to do and how much longer do we wait before we do that? Is this going to be over soon? Um, so that was sort of one aspect of it. I, I was laughing when you said you were getting a refund from, from the colleges because just today I was finally getting refunds from some of the airlines and some of the hotels that we had booked. So still today after all this time. And, uh, and it was different. I mean, we had our groceries delivered for... Uh, quite a while, I don't know, maybe a month and a half. And, and then I finally decided that I would venture out early in the morning before other folks had gone to get groceries. So I'd head up to QFC and, you know, be up there at 6.30 in the morning and there was maybe four or five other people in there. So that kind of became a little bit of a routine. Um, we ended up, we walked every day, at least three miles for almost four or five months straight. Um, fortunately the weather cooperated and, and we were allowed to do that. And that turned out to be a great thing. Um, we chose not to walk, you know, like downtown where there might be a lot of people. We, we walked, we actually walked in, uh, just about every neighborhood in the city. And, wow. uh, I would, I would take my wife to places with, when I was campaigning, I used to doorbell and go door to door and, and introduce myself and talk to folks. So I knew all the neighborhoods. So I would take her to places that she'd never seen, you know, living, We've lived here for 35 years and there was a lot of neighborhoods she'd never seen. So that was really fun. It got us outside, got us a lot of fresh air. Um, looking back, I think it probably got us some extra vitamin D that now they're saying maybe helps you fight that a little bit. And similar to you, what you were talking about, people being sick ahead of time. Um, in February, my wife was real sick. She had a, a bad cough. Uh, we thought it was a bad cold, but it went on for almost two weeks. And I mean, she was miserable and, and I got sort of a minor version of it, but nothing, you know, and then when we, we heard about this later, you know, we kind of wondered whether she had had it and she'd recovered and neither one of us have, have tested, you know, since then. But, um, but that was, you know, it was, she was pretty darn sick. So, you know, fast forwarding to now, um, mm -hmm. I think it changed. Uh, the country, it changed us, it changed how we see things and how we do things. And this is just another one of those tests. And, you know, hopefully we'll get a vaccine and, and we can come through it on the other side. But uh, it's scary. And especially when, you know, people my age uh, that I talk to all the time, these are years, this is a year, a lot of time that we're not going to get back. You know, you, you've got your whole life ahead of you, fortunately. And, uh, you know, this, this, you'll be able to look back on it and it'll be a period in time, but for, for seniors, they're, they're struggling with this a lot. Um, I, I have to tell you that the, the most humorous thing that's happened during all this is that uh, my sons and my, my family, my daughter-in-laws and my grandkids, you know, they don't want us to go out of the house ever, you know, have your groceries delivered. Don't leave the house. And it's just, it's like all of a sudden they're the parents and we're the kids. <laughs> well, this has been a great conversation. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed this. And I, uh, I wish you the best down the road with your, with your college education. And I kind of joke 
uh, in one of our emails back and forth about how this is exciting for me to actually be working with a rocket scientist. So I'm looking forward to you getting that well, degree. And I hope I can uh, prove you right there. I, I hope you do as well.